silence then. Who cares about the clouds when we are together? Just sing a song. Installation safety officer Kirk Vector bidding farewell to Garrison Commander Colonel Eric Sprague. Colonel Sprague is relinquishing command in ceremonies August 18th. More on that in just a moment. Hello and welcome to Mead Week. I'm Brian Spann. This week's edition is mostly about the kids and the upcoming school year. We'll hear from CYS on what they're planning. County schools provide reopening updates and we'll check in with youth sports. These stories and more, but first, as I mentioned a moment ago, Fort Meade is gaining a new garrison commander August 19th. Incoming garrison commander Colonel Christopher Nyland joined outgoing commander Colonel Sprague for this week's COVID-19 town hall. You know, this is my first time in Maryland and I'm excited to be joining this, uh, this great team up at Fort Meade. You know, Colonel Sprague has spent the last several weeks um, bringing me up to speed on what the community has gone through over the past several years. And I'm slowly learning to appreciate what you've endured and, uh, and I'm looking forward to uh, continuing the great work of, uh, of Colonel Sprague and the Garrison team. We'll have full coverage of the Change of Command ceremony on the next edition of Mead Week and on Digital Mead. Meanwhile, MWR's Child and Youth Services held a live Facebook event of their own this week. In his opening remarks, Fran Jameson, Chief of Child and Youth Services, issued a cautionary message to those seeking child care this fall. Our current and projected capacities based on COVID will most likely limit us to only being able to care for single and dual military families at the child development centers. CDC patrons who are in priority 1D, which is active duty with a working spouse and below, should start to consider seeking alternate care at this time. Patrons can register themselves on the wait list once again at militarychildcare.com if they would like to be considered for child care in the future. If you're a school age center patron, we are suggesting that single or dual DOD civilian, which is priority 1E currently, and below, that you should start to seek alternate care at this time. Fort Meade School Liaison Officer Sarah Bonice opened with a description of how the virtual start of the school year is going to go. Elementary schools will begin each day with your child, their teacher, and your child's classmates engaging in a virtual circle time. This is time for social and emotional learning. This will be followed by the real-time learning in content areas for a total of three to four hours of learning for each of the four days. Secondary schools will meet with teachers in their assigned classes virtually. You can watch the entire Q&A on Facebook. Just go to our Facebook page and click on videos. In a related story, Anne Arundel County Public Schools Superintendent Dr. George Arlotto is providing a weekly reopening report every Wednesday. Hello everybody, I'm Superintendent George Arlotto and this is the second in our weekly series of reopening reports designed to provide you with the latest information on the 2020-2021 school year. As you know and have experienced firsthand, this has been an incredibly challenging time for all of us. Entering the new school year in a virtual environment is not what we want or desire for our students and staff. We are heartbroken to not be able to physically welcome our students back into their schools. However, we know that for the long-term benefit of our students, staff, and the community, remaining virtual for the time being is the right decision. In other news, CYS Youth Sports announced this week that fall sports programs remain closed, but that's not stopping them from offering a different kind of programming. Hey you! Yeah you! With uh, COVID putting a halt on our normal operations, um, it was just coming up with something that we can do to you know, stay engaged with our patrons and uh, still offer some sort of programming. So, you know, I had these ideas for these videos, um, something fun to do. Um, the next one I'm working on right now is a golf one. So it'll be like how to hit a golf ball um, off the tee. And finally this week, since our last show, Kimbrough Ambulatory Care Center announced that face coverings with plastic valves embedded in the fabric are no longer authorized at medical treatment facilities. If you arrive for an appointment at Kimbrough with an unauthorized mask, they will provide you an authorized mask upon entry. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Mead Week. <laughs>